President Rodrigo Duterte promised to give enough leeway to the members of his appointed Charter Change Consultative Committee when he swore in to 19 members of the CONCOM. Duterte said he trusts that the committee will not recommend anything to Congress that will harm the country. Former Senator Edgardo Angara is not entirely opposed to the idea of amending the current 1987 constitution. However, he thinks that dividing the country into separate states that may later secede may not bode well for the Philippines. Senator Angara is in the studio with us now to share his insights. Senator, welcome to The Big Story. Salamat, salamat. So, Thanks. your concerns, federalism. I'm not concerns. opposed to, to the concept of federalism because it, it really empowers uh, people uh, in the grassroots. But I'm, I'm against pushing it too, too rapidly, too quickly, without socializing, without teaching, without public education of the people because we have grown up in a unitary state uh, thinking of one nation state, the Philippines. And we work on that for almost over a century until we got the concept of being a Filipino nation. Now, federalism originally as a concept started with, with existing states. states, whether it's in Canada, in Switzerland, in Germany, in Australia, they federated to become united. It's less than, uh, less than 150 years. And we, we, you know, we, we cannot even work a unitary system better. We cannot even govern it better because there's no established party system. And that's why this shifting of party labels is like waking up and put on a new shirt. So that, that's, that weakens the political culture. And I thought there should ought there ought to be a transitional arrangement, Muna. Okay, let's, let's try it on ARM. Let's try it on, on CAR, on the Cordillera, because ARM at least has actual experience. But, uh, and let's solve the, the practical problem of dynast political dynasties there. Let's say we create 16 states to correspond to the 16 existing uh, regional councils. Of the 16, only three are capable of supporting a separate assembly, a separate prime minister, a separate police, separate teaching and health systems. This would be Se the main... NCR. Yeah. Uh, Cebu. Not even Cebu. No, wait. NCR, Calabarzon, and Central Luzon. You will reach a point where the tax taxes of NCR, Central Luzon, Calabarzon will have to be distributed to those underfunded. I mean, if you could I mean, back up a bit, what yeah. is your basis for saying that only these three regions, particularly in Luzon, Central Luzon, NCR, and Calabarzon? Based uh, on the tax. Uh, and yet you're saying that the ARMM, or in this case, maybe the Bangsamoro, should is an ideal laboratory to test this out. But the, I, I would imagine ARMM sits at the other end of that example, on the extreme end of that example, where you have potentially a region that, uh, the, that can identify itself mm -hmm. along a particular ethnic mm -hmm. uh, history. But, but you'll be surprised the era that they get because their because they're geographical areas B is sufficient to support them in the meantime. Cebu is, I think, uh, next to, next to Calabarzon, Cebu is the most, uh, uh, most potential outside, outside Luzon. So at most, siguro yung apat niyan. So what do you think should be the, the way forward and what is your prognosis for all the debates uh, now uh, that we're looking forward to? In, in I, I think, the, I think the, the House is correct in saying that we will prioritize the BBL. Okay, but not just because we want to create a separate Bangsamoro state right now, but we want to see what, what, uh, what strength, what, fa what failings, what weakness we can correct before we shift to a federal system because the ultimate goal really is federalism. Hmm. Now, but what is the overarching philosophy behind this change of government? Poverty. What should be the message be to Congress as it uh, as it considers a constituent assembly. And when you have political leaders now framing it as if 
federal, it's federalism or nothing. In particular, you have congressional leaders saying, you know, if, if, if federalism goes nowhere, the only alternative is a revolutionary government. No, I, I, I think that's, that's a bad logic, you know, because, uh, be, because when you think of revolutionary government, that means you don't care about the rule of law. You don't really care about, uh, about law. What I would suggest is that the Congress or this commission itself set a timeline. The ultimate goal is to empower our people so that we lift millions out of poverty. And we believe between all the forms of government, federalism will achieve that. But this is our timeline. We want, we want rush into it. We will do a laboratory test in, in the arm as in, and in the Cordillera, in Luzon and in Mindanao. And let's see, after a while, we will see, we will find out the weakness, the strength, the failings, and what we ought to do to correct it okay. before we launch a federal system. Senator Angala, thank you for joining us in thanks. the big story. Thanks, thanks. Senator.